Hello, my loves. Welcome to Manifesting the Miraculous, and I am your host, Aurelia, from Aurelia's Light. Today's episode, we are going to jump right into part two of miracles and how to create miracles in our life, the work of Stuart Wilde. In the previous episode, we talked about all kinds of ways how we can use imagination, understanding the universal law, understanding life's mission, the nature of beliefs, and everything that our mind believes limits us and how to break through those obstacles. And tonight we're going to focus on the action plan, the miracle action plan that could help take our dreams into reality. So as a teacher, a veteran teacher of over 25 years, I always suggest listening to things a few times through and sometimes even grabbing a pen and paper and jotting down something that stands out to you. So I invite you to do that for tonight's episode because again, this is about the action. We create in our mind, we imagine in our mind, we fantasize, but we have to put the action that supports the vision. Otherwise, if there's no action, we can't manifest. That is the whole point of coming to the earth plane, of manifesting what we feel and desire and just expand our soul in joy. So grab a pen, paper and relax for the miracle action plan. Step four. It is very important to write out your desires and wants that will be a part of your action plan for it's as if your list becomes your order form to the universal power and in writing it out In a methodical way, you enter into a sacred sacrament and understanding with the power. It now knows what is important to you as you've presented a formal document saying so. Try to write from your feelings and intuition rather than allowing your intellect to drive the agenda of your list. For victories that create good feelings in you are often of greater value than only wishing for material things or flippant acquisitions that just titillate the ego momentarily. At your deepest spiritual nature, you are a feeling, and that feeling is your eternal identity, for it forms the basis of your soul. You can change your list as many times as needed, But until you're comfortable with it, be very clear about what you really, really want. Use exact and precise wording to describe the conditions you require. Remember, the system works, so you must be definite in the way you describe your wants. Here's what you do. Number one, either put the list in a special place like a nice little box or take it with you everywhere you go. Read your list from time to time, when you rise in the middle of the day and when you go to bed. Two, meditate on your miracles when you have time and know that the universal law has received your order form and is just about to deliver. Number three, maintain silence. Talking about your miracles dissipates the energy drastically. Therefore, you cannot share your miracles with others until they happen. Keep it private. Number four, always act and think about your miracles as though you already have the conditions you desire. Feel these miracles granted all about you, as well as just thinking about them. It is the feeling that pulls the power to you. Number five, be open to the inner promptings of the unlimited power source as it instructs you in ways of getting what you want. Realize that the universal law 
has to deliver in the physical plane where you can make use of it. Your heart's desires can come from anywhere, so do not limit your field of expectation. Remain open and flexible at all times. And number six, be lighthearted and breezy and smile a lot. Your first miracle is on its way. Step number five, understanding energy. Since the mind has no way of knowing how the universal law is going to deliver your miracle, don't waste time trying to figure it out. Just know your thoughts should be like acorns that develop gradually into oaks. If you dig them up to discover how things are going, your tree will perish. It's important to avoid fretting. Center on the feeling that in some way, Somehow, the universal law will not let you down because everything in the universe is energy. Solid objects appear as such only because their atoms and molecules move at a high speed. In fact, reality is both solid and not solid at the same time. And this applies to thought forms. They are real and even more powerful than physical reality because they are not constrained by the limits of the material plane. But if you cannot take them apart and analyze them, you have to create them and let them fly. Then, through enthusiasm and belief, you energize the universal law and encourage it to deliver. Try at all times to keep your thoughts pure and on target. If doubt creeps in, don't allow it to dominate for too long. Look at doubt from above yourself. Realize that it's just the mind fretting, not understanding. Creating objections through ignorance and whatever you have set in motion will happen. As you work with the power, it will have a way of showing you the next move at every turn. Believe in it. Know that this inner force is so powerful that it will pull you in excitement and adventure beyond your dreams. Keep it pure, remain silent, and remember to keep your methods secret. Everything that surrounds you has the living spirit within it in various degrees. Living things express it more than do inanimate objects, but all have it. The more you come into contact with the universal law within you, the more you are in touch with the things around you. Everything becomes a symbol and strength to you. The world helps you and the fuller you become, the more dimensions you can pull from. A dear friend of mine was walking along a street one day, wondering what to do with her life. She was at a crossroads, literally and figuratively. Life was flat. She craved inspiration and had asked the universal law to direct her. As she stepped from the curb, a passing car nearly knocked her over. As the passing car screeched around the corner, a book fell out of its trunk. It was a book about humanity's quest for the universal power, and it changed her life. Shortly, she left that town and embarked on a whole new evolutionary path that over a period of time has taken her to great metaphysical heights and into countries and relationships she couldn't have conceived of before. The universal law provided her with a special teaching in the form of that book, and she, being in tune, was ready to benefit. And so it should be for you. As you work towards your miracle, watch for every sign, for every change around you, and you will see the universal law communicating with you. The more you trust it, the more the energy is encouraged to reveal itself 
and various unusual things begin to occur. Your energy quickens and opportunities pop up like corks on a lake. Then you will know that the power is truly with you. This coming in tune more than anything else will help you manifest your desires. You cannot act negatively in one part of the universal law and expect the other part to deliver your miracles unaffected. As you watch your life, you become an expert at reading symbols and you see that you are the only one responsible for what you are and that everything around you expresses an energy. The clothes you wear, the things you say, the people you associate with, the foods you eat and the places you go are all statements to the universal law of what you are. The quality of these statements or coming in tune with yourself and your surroundings is the key to your spiritual unfolding. What you are has great power. Its energy oscillates and reflects the amount of living spirit or God force that you express. The more you work on your life, the more you accept responsibility, and the more energy you will have, the greater will be your expectations. Suppose you have a special project in mind and you want to be sure that you have the maximum possible energy available. Let's say you're heading for a job interview. You have Put the job on your miracle list. The universal law has opened a door and you're halfway there. Here's what you do. Number one, you continue to see that your miracles coming into physical reality. See yourself with the job granted until 72 hours before the interview. Then forget about it. Number two, on the day of your interview, rise early. Spend as much time possible on your own. Avoid interpersonal conflicts and tell the universal law that you're ready and willing to accept the miracle you've been asking for. Three, abstain from energy lowering substances such as alcohol and drugs. Eat lightly. The universal law manifests in you and through you. If you eat great amounts of heavy food, your energy slows and the universal law within you has difficulty expressing itself. You should have salads and fruits and other natural healthy items in sparing quantities and always stay away from junk food. Number five, before you set off for your interview, relax a moment. See the situation as flowing and positive. If you already know the person you'll be meeting, see him or her in your mind's eye happy and smiling and receptive to your energy. See the interview going well and see the miracle delivered. Understanding time, which is step six. Within the universal law, there is no time. Things are in a state of gradual evolvement. A tree has no concept of time because its essence is eternal. It responds to the warmth of the sun, but it is not in time. It develops from a seed, expanding gradually to full maturity. And so it is with the universal law, it can deliver instantly. But if your energy isn't all there, it will seem to you as if it has taken long time. You have to learn patience and keep moving towards your goal, knowing that your thought form will manifest. If you are moving towards one particular miracle and a different avenue opens up unexpectedly, take it. The universal law delivers in strange ways and what you think you desire may be just your way of expressing a totally different goal. A good friend of mine wanted more than anything to be a film director. He graduated from film school in London, but found that he couldn't get any work because of a technical complication. To work in films in England at the time, you had to have a union card, but you couldn't get a union card unless you were working. In effect, the union card created a closed shop. 
so my friend's miracle was stuck. One day, out of the blue, he bumped into an old friend who owned a restaurant, and due to his financial constraints, he, he gladly accepted a job as a waiter. Working hard each day, he spent his spare time watching films and keeping his dreams alive through study. Each day at noon, a well-dressed man would come into the restaurant, and my friend served him diligently, and over the months, the two of them became friends. One day, my friend asked the old man what he did for a living. The old man replied that he was just about to retire from a job he held for many, many years. What job is that? asked my friend. Oh, it's pretty boring, really, replied the old man. I'm a president of a filmmaker's union, and not much ever happens. Fifteen years later, I was flying across the United States, lazily watching an in-flight movie when, to my great delight, I saw my friend's name on the credits of a major film. His miracle had been delivered. When you move into an energy alignment, you can never tell what will happen. Watch for signs, use your feelings to help you decide, and if, after that, you're still not sure, do nothing. If a direction is right, you will know it automatically. If, however, making up your mind requires you to go through great trials and tribulations, you can be sure that the particular course isn't the right one for you. Basically, it's good sense to remember that if you have to ponder a decision, it's usually a mistake. When the universal law delivers, you'll know it. Start your miracle list with a couple of modest requests. Then, as you experience the universal law delivering, you will feel the power of success around you, and that in itself becomes valuable affirmation. Each time you reorganize your list, spend a few moments thinking about how well your last miracle worked. Affirm your power by visualizing your success, and then, as you accomplish one miracle after another, you'll have the confidence to go on to other things. The last step in the miracle action plan, step seven, is understanding your personal power. In conclusion, let's discuss how to establish an energy of power around you. Your mind's natural negative alignment will tend to make you think that your miracles aren't going to come true. Therefore, in order to achieve complete success, you have to work constantly on your mind's doubt. Remind yourself that you're not your mind. You don't accept any energy contrary to your goals. In this way, you establish a pattern of positive affirmation in your life. In your own words, write down nine affirmations that express your belief in yourself and your complete fulfillment in this lifetime. Three affirmations for the morning at dawn, three affirmations for the day, and three affirmations for the night. Before reviewing your miracle list, relax, center your mind, and then read your affirmations slowly. Make your affirmations strong being sure that you feel their power and that they mean something special to you. The words and the feelings that you believe in have the strongest energy. An example of a powerful affirmation could be something like this. Each action I take this day is an expression of the God force. Therefore, each action I take is part of my infinite creativity. Your affirmations act like small twigs in a fire. As you arise, you begin to build energy in the day. Use your affirmations to keep that energy going. Center for a moment to acknowledge that your infinite beauty and your place in all things, then proceed. If you're pulled into an interpersonal conflict, 
take a few minutes on your own to repair your energy or bring yourself back to alignment. And before going out into the day, be sure that your energy is strong. If you care for your power and you balance and center your life, no harm could ever befall you and you enter into the world that few people are ever aware of. Create your day the way you want it. See it going well. See each person you meet as a positive and open to your energy. See the day as harmonious and flowing and see yourself evolving through each and every experience. Finally, before setting out into the day, see the white light of living spirit around you, protecting you, strengthening what you already are and realize the more you believe in yourself, the stronger the white light becomes. It acts as your shield, and from time to time, each day, you should re-energize it by seeing it vibrant and strong, affirming that what you are is a part of the living spirit, or God, and that each moment of your life is one exhilaration and learning. Your position on the earth plane is as a miracle maker. It is inherent in you, in the infinite power that lies already within you. That limitless source is there waiting for you to step up and collect your heritage. And when you do, the power will always be with you. And that is guaranteed so be it. So that is the conclusion of our teachings about creating miracles and the action that must accompany our dreams. I love this work so much. In my own life, this is how I started uh, creating and manifesting. Gosh, it was probably, again, 16 years ago when I found the work of Stuart Wilde. And I remember the, specifically the first one was that I was driving home and I was listening to XM radio. And I remember it was the Spa Channel. And I heard this most beautiful piece by one of my favorite composers that is living today, Ludovico Ainotti. And his music is just so so beautiful and soul filling. And I remember saying, I want my music to be on XM radio. Why can't it be? And at that point I hadn't even written an album yet. So I just had this dream and this vision that I wanted to be on the spa, XM spa. And so I wrote it down and I started to just imagine seeing my name on the radio. And this was obviously before Spotify, this was before Pandora, this was probably in 2009 and or 10. So I ended up creating my first album, which was called Opening. I was after my spiritual awakening and I put so much of my, just everything that I felt going through it in that first album. And Interesting, I just followed my leads. I wrote it down. I didn't tell anyone, actually. I kept it all to myself. And a year from late then, I ended up finishing the album and I hired these promoters that I had no idea were the same promoters as my own favorite composer. So that happened later that I realized that. But a year from that dream, I ended up driving on this highway and I saw my name on the radio, exactly where I envisioned it would be. And interestingly enough, even more miraculous, about a month later, the promoters that were promoting my music invited me to a concert in New York City in the Beacon Theater with none other than Ludovico Iannotti. So I was sitting there in the theater watching my favorite composer of that time and right behind Sting 
And then I even got to be invited backstage and to talk to him and to hang out with him for a while. And I was like, wow, this stuff really, really works. And that was the beginning of my path of conscious manifestation, consciously living my destiny. And I invite you to live yours. So if you would like to work further with me, I invite you to check out some of my courses. I've created a, an excellent one specifically for women and their voices, but I go through a lot of where we're stuck in our energy uh, patterns and how our voice could actually drive the force of manifestations. So if you're listening and you're interested, check out some of my courses. That one is called Step Into the Power of Your Voice. And it is your not only your outer voice, but your inner voice and your soul's voice. So I thank you so much for listening to this episode. I send you so much love and light for this week. And I will see you next time.